that if you feel good, if you've watched something you enjoyed, you got a dopamine hit. Okay, yeah. And there's an implication there that dopamine is just doing that. Mm -hmm. But that's simply not true. Mm -hmm. You know, a way of looking at dopamine, as with most other neurotransmitters, and even hormones, if you like, is that they're like currency in the body. Mm. And that currency can be spent in different circuits to get different things. Okay. So in one particular part of a network, dopamine is used for things like reward and motivation. Mm. But it's also really, really important for smooth movement control. Okay. And not having a tremor. And really, really important in controlling breast milk regulation. Okay, cool. Uh, very thing, really vary depending on where it's used in the body. So this pubis identification of I got a dopamine hit. Whilst it's kind of trying to get at something, that oversimplification could lend itself into problems. And when people start thinking, oh, I could microdose a bit of this to up my dopamine and I'll feel better without being addicted to something, yeah. that's an oversimplification and a problem yeah. because okay. that's not what's happening. Yeah. At the very worst end of the situation, when dopamine systems go completely low yeah. and awry, an example of that is Parkinson's disease. Okay, yeah. And at the other end, the dopamine hypothesis as it re relates to diseases like schizophrenia, mm -hmm. we use dopamine blocking drugs to treat those and those are termed antipsychotics. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see that this is very, very different. There's so much scope in what dopamine does mm -hmm. that feeling good or enjoying something mm -hmm. doesn't neatly, you know, there's so much more going on than that. Yeah. Yeah. Would it? Be fair to say on some level it chains things together actions or thoughts 